everyone. I'm, I'm Shir Meng uh, with Open Geo Hub. I'm doing, uh, currently doing my PhD uh, uh, on the topic of SOG and carbon modeling. Um, today, the thing I'd like to uh, introduce to you is uh, the spatial temporal prediction of SOG and carbon density for Europe. Uh, so basically, the production of a data cube about SOG and carbon. Um, let's see, yeah. Nice, this is the updated version. Um, so first of all, <laughs> um, yeah, I think uh, in, the, in, the, in this two days of workshop, uh, we've already seen a lot of things about forest, hydrology modeling, different kind of modeling, environment modeling. Um, but soil is uh, a little bit different because there's something happening underneath, uh, below the ground, so it's less straightforward to model. Um, and also, um, uh, uh, for soil, there are a lot of things you could model, like the pH, the, the nitrogen content, the nutrition, moisture, uh, aggregate uh, aggregatability. All these kind of things could be modeled, and they say something about soil state, how healthy the soil is, how sustainable, uh, how could it sustain the, the, um, uh, the ec uh, ecological services. Uh, but one of the most important uh, is organic carbon. Uh, uh, this just to give you an idea of why we are doing this organic carbon uh, density modeling. Um, you don't need to understand this picture uh, uh, totally, because uh, <laughs> it's just to say that uh, organic carbon is relevant to many processes happening in the soil, uh, physical ones, uh, chemical ones, uh, biological ones. and. Um, uh, theoretically speaking, uh, uh, maybe that's not the correct way to say that, but usually uh, the more soil and carbon density uh, it is, the healthier the soil is. Uh, so uh, today's presentation is basically about the whole uh, general pipeline uh, we used to, to produce the soil and carbon density maps. Uh, there are in total seven steps. I will just walk uh, you uh, through uh, every step in this uh, framework, uh, but, I, but I would like to stress that uh, it is a modular uh, a framework, so every step in here could be uh, separated to different persons and then easily merged back, uh, so that is, uh, uh, it could be done in a distributed way. Uh, and also, uh, though we are talking about SOG and carbon today, uh, it is this general framework is also applicable to other soil properties as what we did for uh, in OpenGeo Hub. And uh, last uh, is that uh, random, uh, here we are using the random forest model. Uh, it is a core algorithm. We use it for both SOG and carbon prediction and the uncertainty estimate. Uh, so the first uh, step, the first three steps would be about the preparation of the uh, material for the modeling. The first step is the uh, uh, preparation of the covariates, or say the features you use to predict the organic carbon. And uh, um, the, the process is uh, uh, super um, com computational and it takes a long time. Um, it is so much work that we need to uh, uh, describe all the things there using another individual paper. Uh, for more details, you can check uh, the, uh, the publication here. Uh, but basically, we try to uh, summarize, uh, to try to include all the environmental features like uh, vegetation, soil, crop, and uh, moisture uh, using spectral indices from Landsat. And this forms the cornerstone of the uh, covariates, or say the features we used. And uh, the second step, is to prepare the training data set, uh, or say, uh, to harmonize and uh, um, to collect and harmonize all the SOG and carbon density uh, measurements. Um, uh, the thing with soil, uh, soil property measurements is that uh, different uh, uh, laboratory or say different regions using different methods to measure the same, the same uh, uh, property like SOG and carbon, but actually they're not the same because they use the different method and uh, uh, which could lead to actually very different uh, things. In that case, if we, we just use them uh, as, uh, uh, without cleaning, without harmonization, we just use them, it will cause a, a big problem. That's why we developed this uh, very simple but uh, useful uh, decision-making uh, standard. 
Um, so basically, the Lucas uh, soil uh, survey is the largest and the most consistent uh, soil survey in available in Europe. We use it as a reference. And then for the other national or say supranational data sets we collected, uh, we just check how comparable it is to Lucas. If it is comparable, if it is uh, or say convertible, uh, we keep it. Otherwise, we drop it. And uh, here is uh, the document of everything we did. So you can see Lucas has the quality flag of 10, meaning it's the best quality. And uh, we also have some other da uh, data from other uh, 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 survey efforts. And they, some of them use the same method as Lucas did. So we also assign a uh, uh, best uh, uh, quality flag to it. But some of them uh, didn't. And we check if the method they used, if, uh, if that's comparable to Lucas or if that's something convertible to Lucas. Uh, if according to uh, literature it is, uh, we, we apply the, uh, the equation there. If not, we just drop them. And that uh, results in this um, uh, uh, soil organic carbon density data over the Europe. Uh, but actually, soil organic carbon density is not something people measure directly. Usually, uh, you need two soil properties to get soil organic carbon density. One is the soil organic carbon content, and the other is the bulk density. And uh, you just multiply them to get uh, soil density. Uh, uh, so that uh, leads to a thing is that uh, if you look at the uh, upper left uh, uh, figure, that's the uh, data availability map of the soil organic carbon density, which is very less compared to the soil organic carbon content data availability. That's because for most of the SOC data, we don't have the uh, corresponding density data. And that's something we would like to overcome in the future um, by fitting a, a relationship between the SOC and SOC density, which is shown on the uh, lower left uh, figure. Um, um, so in this case, uh, we, we don't need the bulk density data to get the de SOC density data. We can just uh, fit a model there. Uh, but of course, this will introduce extra uncertainties into the modeling. So further uh, studies are still needed to, to see whether it will work and how it will work. Uh, and the uh, lower right figure shows the uh, data availability across depths, basically. And you can see that uh, uh, most data are available for topsoil, so very shallower depths. And uh, for uh, the soil deeper than uh, one meter, we, we actually don't have any data. And the third step is to uh, combine the covariates we prepared and the soil and carbon measurement we have and uh, 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 spatial temporally to get the training metrics. Um, so basically, we uh, have uh, a, se uh, a series of SOG and carbon density measurements uh, from uh, a certain location, certain time, and we overlay that with the covariance layers to get the same, uh, to get the co uh, feature values from the same location, same time. And this is done by a function from Second Map, which is a package developed by my colleague. And I think they also introduced this in another session in this uh, workshop. So this is basically the preparation of the training data set. After getting it, uh, we started the model calibration, which involves hyperparameter fine tuning uh, done with scikit learn and feature selection. And we uh, uh, using a method called repeated subsampling based uh, cumulative feature importance. So it's uh, a data driven uh, approach to select uh, the uh, uh, the best. Uh, features set that could be used for SOG and carbon density modeling. Um, uh, I'll not go into details for that. Uh, and then once we get the model, one of the most important things is to evaluate it, how accurate the model is. Uh, so the upper two figures are the uh, uh, two validations we did for uh, SOG and carbon prediction. One is the five-fold spatial cross-validation we, we did on the training data set. And one is we trained the model on the training data set first and then validated on, on the independent test data set. And you can see the R-square is around 0 0.7. 
and uh, CCC is above 0 0.8. Uh, this is actually quite nice for so SOC modeling, uh, but may not be uh, super nice for some other uh, environmental modeling, like forests or something. And on the bottom, you can see the uh, the evaluation of the uncertainty estimation. So apart from predicting SOC and carbon density, we also try to estimate the uncertainties of these predictions so that to communicate to the users how reliable this map it is at certain location. And uh, uh, the uncertainty here is indicated by the prediction interval, uh, namely PI on the, on the y-axis. And uh, uh, what we did here is basically we, tr uh, we uh, tell the model to predict the PI at different levels from zero to 100%, which is one. And then we uh, apply this model on the independent test data set and uh, we, uh, we check how, how much uh, of the data is captured by this prediction interval. And you can see uh, uh, on the axis is the prediction interval we would like to capture and on the axis is the uh, prediction interval uh, it actually captured and they align quite well. That's that's good. So basically, the model is doing what it should do for the uncertainty estimation. Um, so the model. Uh, hmm? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, so now I get it. So the model is uh, doing great. And now the next step is to apply it uh, in the continental European level to generate maps. Um, we did this in um, in uh, aggregated way uh, to produce the maps at uh, the whole continental Europe uh, at different times from 2000 to 2022 and at different depths for soil is always uh, an extra dimension uh, which is depths. Um, so uh, what we did here is to we, we predict uh, the uh, SOG and carbon density predictions and the uncertainties for four corners of the block, which is uh, the uh, the beginning time, the, the, the end time, and the beginning depths and the end depths, and then we average them to get the block predictions. So uh, the final predictions of the SOG and carbon is, uh, SOG density is not for a specific depths, but more like a block average uh, between depths and period. And that results in the maps, and uh, we we need to do some quality check. Uh, apart from apart from uh, model evaluation, we also did the quality check by just visually see the map and compare it across uh, time. Um, so we uh, we chose a uh, area in uh, in Bavaria and uh, zoom into this place and from 2000 to 2022 you can see there's uh, uh, the, the change uh, visually though it's not super obvious but you can still see across time the blue uh, portion increased which means the organic carbon density actually decreased um, but the thing is that uh, if you look at this uh, uh, time series uh, line plot you can see that the prediction interval is actually quite high so for uh, SOG and predictive SOG and carbon density of around 40 uh, kilograms per cubic meter, the uncertainty could be as much as the same. And that's not something good, but that's the best we can do. And uh, I think that's uh, also necessary to communicate to the, to the public. Um, but that's at the point level, uh, this uncertainty at the point level. Um, and then, uh, so this is the check across time, and then we do a check visually by looking at the places. So we selected three uh, points from uh, across the Europe. They are represent, uh, they're representing uh, a point from peatland, uh, which means there are a lot of, lot of carbon, and woodland, forest, per se, and uh, cropland. And you can see the Oh, sorry, I didn't put the, put the color, color legend here, but basically the darker the color is, the, m the more SOG and carbon density uh, it is. And it aligns well with common sense that uh, the peatland usually have the, uh, 
uh, most uh, carbon content or density, and uh, followed by a forest and cropland. But the another interesting thing is that uh, it's again the uncertainty. So if, if you look at this uh, two uncertainty profile uh, across the apps, uh, you can see that the cropland has the uh, lowest uncertainty. That's not that's mostly because the majority of our training data comes from cropland, and so the model is super biased to that to that direction, and. Um, and also uh, from this uh, uh, profile, you can see that the deeper uh, the prediction is, the, the more uncertainty the model is, the more uncertain the model is about the prediction. That's also, that also comes from the training data set because we have the majority of the training data set from the topsoil. Um, that's also something we would like to improve in the future uh, studies. And uh, the last step after the model, uh, the material preparation, model fitting, evaluation, map production. The last step is the step to link the final product back to the beginning, which is to update with the new data. As I said, uh, for the uh, uh, pixels, for the places or times, depths where we have the uh, largest uncertainty, that's usually because we don't have the data there. So uh, we are hoping that uh, we, co we could collect more data from those underrepresented area and when those new data points or updated covariance laser, uh, layers become available, the pipeline could be rerun and regenerated with updated material. And uh, something extra besides just uh, producing maps, model feeding, uh, we tried to uh, add more transparency of the map. Uh, we, uh, so we tried some tools to uh, shed some lights on how the model uh, makes the decision. Uh, here we used the Shapley value, if you, uh, but basically it's uh, quite uh, straightforward. So the soil depth is the most important feature to, to model, uh, to predict soil so density, followed by the vegetation and the climate. Uh, and also, uh, we did some spatial aggregation analysis. Uh, that's because, uh, as I just showed, the pixel level uncertainty is quite high, uh, which is very challenging to derive any kind of meaningful uh, trend analysis conclusion. So we tried to aggregate the pixel level predictions and uncertainties to regional level. Um, that's uh, the experiment we did. So we targeted this nuts tree region from, uh, again, Bavaria, and uh, we, uh, we uh, estimate the regional average of the SOC and the regional uh, uncertainty of the SOC. And uh, uh, we can see that uh, from the bar plot, the, uh, he but here, uh, 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 in the bar plot, the model based uh, uh, the blue bar uh, represents the uh, regional uncertainty of the of the SOC from the models we used, and the uh, yellow bar represents the regional uncertainties from the uh, SOC density measurements we have, and they are comparable. That's a good thing. So that means our model is doing. Uh, uh, so not necessarily better, but also not worse than the actual uh, field measurements we get from the field. And uh, the green bar is actually the pixel level uh, uncertainty. So we could see that the spatial aggregation indeed reduces the uh, uncertainty. Um, though the pixel level uncertainty is high, but if you would like to do some research researches on the original level, it's still possible. Um, yeah, so that's basically it. Uh, there, there's a publication, it's still in review, and data, uh, how uh, the products and, uh, and the code, how we make everything here. Uh, so that's it. Thanks for your attention. I'm looking forward to your... <laughs> to your